Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the new Spaceship 2 free flies for the first time, Technium upgrades their P-2002 light sport airplane, NOAA Hurricane Hunters move to Lakeland Linder Airport. I'm Brie Cross, this is December 7, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. The newest Spaceship 2 flew free of its mothership for the first time just a few days ago. VSS Unity was piloted by Mark Stuckey and Dave McKay over the course of the one-hour, 20-minute flight, of which 10 minutes was the free flight of Spaceship 2. The pilots, mission controllers, and ground crews collected valuable data. The test flight was the fifth flight of VSS Unity following several recent captive carry flights. The company said that VSS Unity was flying light and slow, achieving a maximum speed of approximately Mach 0.6 while gliding home from an altitude of 50,000 feet. An initial look at the data as well as feedback from the two pilots indicated that the flight went extremely well. This was the first of many gliding flights that will be performed prior to the first rocket-powered flight. Technam has introduced what they say is a substantially updated and improved Mark II version of the company's popular LightSport eligible P2002 Sierra. The Technam P2002 Sierra Mark II retains all of its flying qualities but now offers an improved cabin for greater comfort, top-level avionics, new paint colors and interior options, and a redesigned cowling for the 100 horsepower Rotax engine. Customers can choose instrument panel options which include the basic analog instruments, need for visual flight, a six-pack analog with Garmin GPS, the Dynon Skyview with twin 10-inch displays, the Garmin G3X which features twin 10.6-inch screens, and the G3X night version with fully backlit backup instrumentation. The largest choice of options is for interior and exterior styling, with four choices for every style package referred to as standard, premium, and power. The first Mark II model will be delivered to Technam US in Sebring, Florida, and displayed at the Florida Aero Expo January 25th through the 28th. After the break, Florida Airport gets a major business boost. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Lakeland Linder Airport in Central Florida will be the new home of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's P-3 Orion Hurricane Hunters and other aircraft next year. The city held a news conference last week to announce the move. The Air Force chose not to continue its relationship with NOAA to base the aircraft at nearby McDill Air Force Base. In all, nine NOAA aircraft will be relocated to the airport. The Ledger newspaper reports that NOAA will pay the airport about $6.8 million for the use of the Airside Center for the next five years. The contract includes an option for another five years at a cost of $5.8 million. The NOAA contract will bring 100 high-skilled, high-wage jobs to the area, and suppliers that work with the hurricane hunters may also consider relocating to the area. The relocation is expected to occur May 1, 2017. With some 3,000 Air TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Some of the events that you put together for this, the gauntlet and combat, it cracked us up. What we're seeing here is one fun, too extraordinary from the standpoint of some of the skills we've seen represented, and then the little air show wasn't mind-blower. 
If you think that large and exciting air events don't occur in the middle of winter, you're not familiar with eFest. It's an exciting indoor model airplane event that you have to see to believe, and you'll enjoy seeing it in this video. Search the Electrifying eFest 2015 on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Delta receives its first U.S. produced Airbus aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The first delivery of an A321 aircraft from the Airbus U.S. manufacturing facility to Delta Airlines took place today in Mobile, Alabama. Delta already operates 137 A320 family aircraft and 40 A330s and have another 123 aircraft on order. NASA has scaled back its plans for the first crewed mission of its Orion spacecraft, Exploration Mission 2. The mission is now planned to last eight days with only a single loop around the moon, according to a report from Space News. ACSS has launched its NXT-700 transponder for legacy business jet aircraft. This new ACSS transponder was successfully flown aboard a Learjet 31A with Duncan Aviation. ACSS is also providing an FAA-approved model list supplemental type certificate for the system. The Civil Aviation Administration of China has granted Part 145 approval for Flight Aerospace Solutions. The approval allows flight to repair automated flight information reporting system units and return them to customers in China with an appropriate release certificate. Duncan Aviation recently released an update to its Straight Talk about WAS eBook. This easy to read eBook gives operators a closer look at the wide area augmentation system for use in the United States for IFR approaches. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. According to a report, a seaplane service operating from Lake Chelan in Washington state has been notified that its lease is being terminated. Seaplane service has operated from Lake Chelan in some form since 1945, according to a story submitted to the Lake Chelan Mirror by Shane Carlson of Chelan Seaplanes. Chelan Seaplanes had been operating out of the Sunset Marina since the mid-1980s. However, the development of the valuable land has led to the abrupt termination of the 30-plus year home for the Valley Seaplane Service. According to the report, the marina is set to undergo a major update and the seaplane base lost out to the development of condos at the marina. Carlson said in part, quote, We will continue to pursue any viable options posed to restore the service. The valued service has been on the lake far too long to see it go away permanently. In the meantime, the service has been suspended indefinitely. Chelan Seaplanes has posted an online petition to allow customers and residents to show support for its revival. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.